What if this happens? What if that happens? What if that doesn't happen? And on and on it goes. They consistently worry themselves in circles. If you struggle with the fear of the unknown, you cannot beat yourself up. It's a very common thing. I get it. We all get it. So if you want to begin to grow, you've got to put something out here that you can't reach easily, that has got to make you stretch, got to make you jump for it, got to make you get back a little bit and dig in so that you can take a leap for it. And maybe you jump up there and you miss it and you skin your knees and you come back again and you bust your lip next time. But you keep on and through that process, you learn how to leap higher. You start challenging yourself to dig deeper and then you discover some things about you that you don't know right now, some talents that you have in you that you didn't know that you can do. I started out just talking to kids and now I'm speaking at corporations. Now I'm traveling. I didn't know I can do this, but had I not given myself a chance. I'm afraid what's going to happen when I fail. What are my friends going to think when I'm coming back empty handed? What am I going to think of myself? No matter what. Don't allow other things or people or circumstances to determine what your reaction is going to be. You've got to learn how to observe it. Just stand back and watch what's going on and choose not to buy into it. So know what your mission is. Know what your intent as the commander of your life. Know what your intent is and then fight with everything you've got. Listen, y'all, we have control of our minute, our hour, our day, our week, our month, and our year. Stop running around being on the receiving end of whatever people want to dump on you. You showed up. You accepted that invite. You invited these people to your house. You're in a relationship with that man. You're in a relationship with that woman. That's you. So how do you feel at the end of your night? The next thing is, see yourself there. How will you feel once you get there? What will the experience be like for you? What will be different? What kind of person do you have to become in order to get there? Visualize yourself there. Living the experience, you want to see yourself beyond your circumstances. You got a challenge, see yourself beyond your challenge. See yourself with the challenge already resolved. And knowing that all is well, seeing yourself in control and in charge of your destiny, being healthy and happy. I'm telling you, man, being successful is a mental condition. You can all mentally condition yourself to being successful. All you got is your mind. You in control of it. It's, it's times I felt like giving up. I mean, no matter who you are, if you have a goal in life, everybody has a turn back moment. Everybody has a crossroad. If if you haven't been at it, it's coming. You can either decide to continue or to quit. It is important in the area of motivating yourself, it's important to know why you're doing it. Because that mind will say, why bother? Why go through all this? This is too hard. No, throw in the towel. It's not worth it. Has it ever said that to you before? Here's how you can handle that. Here's how you override that. Write down five reasons why you deserve it. Why do you deserve what you want? Why you? Why do you deserve it? What meaning and value will it bring to your life? What's so different about you that you deserve your goal or this goal? And when you write down those five reasons, when you have some down moments and you're going to have them, when that conversation starts talking to you and it's going to talk to you, what you will do is you can pull that out and read it and it will build you up. It will be your rod and your staff to comfort you through some challenging moments because you're going to have some. Life will knock you between the eyes. 
It will catch you on the blind side, come out of nowhere, stuff you can't anticipate. That will knock the wind out of you. You want to give up. That's why it's important for you to work on yourself, listening to tapes, building yourself up, talking to yourself with power, feeling, and conviction, building yourself up day in and day out. The next thing is that whatever you do, you want to develop technical mastery. You want to be the best at what you do. You want to master it. See, part of, of, of self-motivation is you've got to find something that gives you a strong sense of competence. Well, you become known for that. You develop a reputation of being good at doing that. You set some high personal standards for yourself. You're not competing with anybody else. You're just unfolding yourself to be the best person that you could be. That you want to give the best quality service that you can give because that is a statement about who you are. The other thing that's the key to self-motivation is recognize the fact that you're going to get into some slumps Recognize the fact that you're going to encounter a great deal of failure in life. It goes with the territory. But in the face of that, you want to be relentless. The next thing is that when you want something out of life, you've got to be willing to go into action. Don't wait around for things to be just right. Don't wait for things to be perfect. Don't wait for the ideal situation. It will never be ideal. There will always be a reason. Well, as soon as the children grow up, as soon as I pay my bills, as soon as I get my divorce, as soon as I get enough money together, do what you can, where you are with what you have, and never be satisfied. A lot of people never take a chance in life. They don't want to take any chances. They want the situation to be ideal. See, that's not walking by faith. That's walking by sight. If I can see it, I'll do it. No, 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 no. A lot of people say, if I can see it, I'll believe it. No, 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 no. If you believe it, you can see it. You survived every hater. You survived all the evictions. You survived the firings. You survived all the tell you, no, we ain't hiring. You survived all the trouble you ever been in. Your survival rate is 100%. 100%. All you got to do is start changing the way you think. The lessons I learned out of my failures probably are a lot more valuable than if I had just made a successful decision and moved on. So remember this, you don't see things in your life as they are. You see things in life as you are. And so the more you alter you, the more you begin to see things differently. What is amazing about this is we control who we are by what we think about. Think about this just for a second. Wherever you're sitting watching this, the chair that you're sitting in, if you're sitting in a chair, if you're driving in a car and you're listening to this, that seat you're in started in someone's mind as a thought, right? Every detail of it, the fabric, the cushions, the way it's structured, every single piece of that started in someone's mind as a thought and then became a reality by putting out the pieces together. See, everything in life is that way as well. It always begins with a thought. Life is worthwhile if you stay. You've got to learn to stay now, you don't have to stay forever. Just stay till you see it through. A guy builds a foundation and then he wanders off somewhere and builds another foundation. He's got these foundations scattered all across the country. I mean, no walls, no roofs, just a bunch of foundations. Not a good reputation. Stay. You don't have to stay forever. Just stay to finish something. Don't fall into the trap of less than refined sophistication. Stay till it's over. The fourth if that makes life worthwhile. One is if you learn, two is if you try, three is if you stay, and fourth if that makes life worthwhile is if you care. Caring is a unique human experience that is so vital and so powerful and so all-encompassing and so far-reaching. If you care at all, you'll get some results. If you care enough, you can get magnificent results. 
To lead a life worth living, you've got to learn, you've got to try, you've got to stay, and you've got to care. Taking responsibility for your own life. Taking responsibility for whatever happens to you. Knowing that you have consciously made the decisions that are now affecting you. Knowing that what is happening now, today, is the direct result of your activity, what you did yesterday. Self-reliance is basically counting on yourself. Now, being self-reliant doesn't mean you can't work with others or trust others. Self-reliance means counting on yourself, trusting yourself, being confident with yourself, being responsible to yourself, trusting your own instincts, trusting the conclusions that you have developed from your study of experiences and philosophies taking the credit that is due you, learning from the mistakes that you have made, being self-reliant. Gestalt psychologists give an example of being self-reliant. They say that you're responsible for getting caught in the rain. They say that by deciding not to carry an umbrella every day, you have made the decision to endure an occasional drenching. Translation? By not being prepared, you make the choice of getting caught in some of life's unpleasant circumstances. Be they rain, failures, economic losses, relationship losses, professional losses, personal losses. By not being prepared, thinking ahead, it's your choice. Now here's the other side of it. By being prepared, you increase your chances of success. You increase the likelihood by being prepared, you increase your chances of success, of seizing opportunities when they come your way, of being ready within yourself to take advantage of once-in-a-lifetime situations. Some people tend to blame others for their mistakes, blame others for their failures. Somebody says, it's not my fault the report isn't done. So-and-so didn't do their part. Of course it's your fault. It's your report too. It's your responsibility to see that everyone you delegated work to does their part. Now, you can't control what others around you do, but it's in your own best self-interest, your enlightened self-interest, that you stay on top of things, especially if it's going to affect your future. You think your boss cares that John didn't do his part? You think he sees John as the bad guy? Of course not. All he sees is that the report isn't done, bottom line. Be responsible for the things that affect you. You can make sure you're more responsible by checking in with those people who are working with you, the people who make up your team. You can be more responsible by saying, hey John, how are you doing with your part? Do you need some help? Can we put somebody else in here to help you finish? Now if John consistently doesn't handle his part, you've got to replace John. If he isn't doing his share, you've got to find somebody that will. Or what? It will negatively affect you. You can't wake up in the morning that the project is due hoping and wishing that John has done his part. No, you've got to be responsible because it's going to affect your career too. Now, my approach to my better future very early on in my career was to just go through the day with my fingers crossed. And I used to say something like, I sure hope things will change for the better. Then here's what I found out. They're not going to change. Somebody says, well then, how will my life ever change? Answer, when you change. When you change, when you get better, it'll get better. If you change, It'll all change. Don't put it on someone else. Hope that someone else will change it for you. Take responsibility for yourself. Take personal responsibility.
money with that body, the more repetitive it is that you place yourself in those things, those places, and those situations, the more your brain becomes familiar with it, the more it gravitates towards it. You can't think about it once. It's the repetition over and over again. Your brain begins to think, oh, I belong here. We belong here. You actually eventually convince yourself, literally, that you belong in your dreams by the repetitive and specific thinking and visions of them over and over again. And don't be disturbed because no one else can see it. That's not unusual. That is ordinary. But because you want some different kind of results in your life, you've got to be willing to be unreasonable. If you want unreasonable results in your life, you've got to be willing to be unreasonable. Part of being unreasonable, you don't judge according to appearances. Part of being unreasonable, you can see it because you believe it. Most people won't do that. One of the keys to self-motivation that empowers you is that you want to find a cause larger than yourself. Find something that you can contribute to. Find something that you can make a difference because you can. Part of what feeds your larger vision, part of what gives you a reason for being, part of what gives you your life is being able to give something back. So I can't afford to give anything. You can't afford not to give. Give your time. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do, but I'm going over there. It's part of my tithing in the universe. Once you develop that, that special sense of mission, and that's what you develop when you're part of a larger cause than yourself, it drives you. You don't need an alarm clock to get up in the morning. You have special power. You go places and folk will like to be around you. They will know there's something different about you. When you go in, they say, hey, that's somebody important. I want to know who you are. I just want to be near you. That energy that you have, that consciousness that you will embody will affect everybody around you. You must be willing to do the things today others won't do. In order to have the things tomorrow, others won't have. That's why the Book of Life said the road to life is straight and narrow and few there be that find it because few there be that are willing to do the things today others won't do. In order to have the things tomorrow, others won't have. What are the things that others won't do? Number one, make discipline a major force in your life. Socrates said the undisciplined life is an insane life. The road to life is straight and narrow because few there be that are willing to discipline themselves. Here's something else that most people won't do. Make it okay to fail. A lot of people, 85% of people allow their fear of failure to outweigh their desire to succeed. Credit goes to our awesome patrons who make videos like this one possible. Consider joining them to support our work. You can also support us by subscribing to our channel and clicking the bell button to get notified when our new videos are released. And as always, thank you for watching. Most of y'all have visions and ideas that are sent to you and you're trying to explain it to other people and because they were never sent the vision, most of y'all say, well, maybe it's not meant to be. That was something that God sent you. That was your vision, your idea. It's not his or not hers. So what ends up happening is your family, your friends, they end up talking you out of your individual experience that you have with God. Why don't you show the world who you really are? Many of us secretly feel like we have so much less to offer than what people expect. And that even when people compliment us, we figure that the reason that they're complimenting us is because they don't really see us for who we are. If you take the lead, you will become a target. But just because they're shooting at you doesn't mean they shot you.
In fact, some of you should rejoice in the fact that somebody has emptied out their quiver of arrows shooting at you and you are still here. Watch out for weeds because people will control you with a weed and you will miss your opportunity trying to be loyal to the we. And all of a sudden, in order to fit in in your sociological environment, you passed up the promotion, you passed up the position that you wanted to take because you want the people you're sitting beside to like you and accept you. I think that among the things that prevent us from acting is the fear of failure. And if you've already failed, you don't want to fail again. The pain of that, the fear of loss is another thing. Because many times when we do those things that we know we need to do, we feel that we might lose somebody. Many of us don't act because we want other people's approval. And that's not possible. Many of us don't do the things that we want to do and don't act because of lack of self-confidence. We don't believe enough in ourselves. The little decisions that you make, they matter. They add up, and you have to connect those dots. Otherwise, you don't know where you're going to end up, and it might be bad. I just beat me. This ain't about nobody else. I just beat me. If I can keep beating myself, pause, if I can keep doing that, then that means that I'm in a battle with the only person that I really want and beat, and that's me. I don't, I don't care about anybody else. I have no worry or gripe about the next man or woman's journey. That's not what I'm what I'm up against. If I can continue to outdo me from the day before, then I'm then I'm ahead. What we wish we had done is the voice of regret, speaking in a sorrowful tone at a time when there is no going back. This is regret. Why do we live our life to be validated so much by strangers? Why do we let these people dictate how we feel about ourselves? Our self-esteem, our worth depends on if they like it or not. Who cares? Those people ain't going to be there when times get hard. Those people don't even like you. Half of them don't. Those people don't really care about you. When you're about to make those extreme jumps and leaps, it's always gonna be your friends and your family. They will be the first ones to try and talk you out of what God has put on your heart to do. If you got anything left, you ought to stop right where you are and give God some praise. I made some mistakes, but I got something left. I almost died, but I got something left. Been through a divorce, but I got something left. Had to send my children back home, but I got something left. Moved back here with my mama, but I got something left. I don't know what kind of odds are against you today, physically, financially. I don't know what kind of storm has come or trying to come into your life. If you wait, too long to decide what you're going to do with your life, you'll find out that you've already done it. You have to learn to start where you are. Big doors swing on little hinges. When you start renaming it and you start reframing it and you choose to remain in it, what happens is, is you produce this word. It's called resiliency. The righteous man, he falls seven times. But he gets back up. I'm choosing today to get back up, to remain in the grind. We all have these tough moments in life. And see, they, they can make you or they can break you. Come on now. Come on. Bring it. Come on now. I had to replace fearfulness with being fearless and take the initiative to do something else with my life. Greatness is not inherited. It's not the result of birth, in other words. You can be born high and live low. 
or you can be born low, but you can still live high. Your greatness is not determined by your pedigree or, or the family that you were born into. Your parents can be great and you can be a dummy. The key to your future is the successful management of time and change. You can't stop time, so all you can do with them is manage them. And you become what you are based on how you manage both of them. All the rearview mirror does is allows you to see what you've passed and to prevent what you've passed from coming up on you again. The windshield is your future. It's where you're going. It's where you're headed. I hope you all picked up this today. And think about that, how that affects your life. Don't dilute the vision and don't pollute it with how you want it. Don't weaken it by diluting it. Don't pollute it by adding to it. Some of the people you're trying to straighten out, they're not going to ever be straightened out. They're chickens when you're supposed to be sailing with the eagles. And that chicken that with all that gawking and flapping ain't going to ever fly. And you're just chasing behind something that's not going to ever jump over four feet in the air. You could have been soaring with eagles and you're fooling with them chickens. They're chickens. Feed them and keep on walking. Enlightened self-interest needs to be educated. I will learn that life is not just the passing of time. I will learn that life is the collection of experiences, highs and lows, laughter and tears. You must decide to act. You must have the discipline to act. One discipline affects another discipline. Everything affects everything else. Nothing stands alone. Every time you learn something new, you push something old out of your brain. See, a lot of people don't want to learn now. And that's okay. That's none of your business, none of my business. But if you are one of those like me, hungry, people that are hungry are willing to learn. You're keeping your mind active because you're engaged in this thing called life. You still have a presence. You are forced to be reckoned with. You have greatness in you. Yes, I'm going for it. There are more lives for me to touch, more lives for me to transform. If you only knew all the things God has refused to let happen to you, you may have had some bad breaks, but just the fact that you're still here is a sign God's favor is on your life. There may be obstacles trying to stop you now. You don't understand it. It's because there's greatness in you. The enemy doesn't come against people that don't have anything. If you weren't a threat, he'd leave you alone. Yes, I have big obstacles, but I know it's because I have a big destiny. Had some bad breaks, but they could not finish me off. I'm still standing. Many times when God starts training you, he trains you with trouble. Exposing you to various degrees of frustrating situations and then critiquing your response so that you can learn what, how you should have handled this particular situation. Step back and ask yourself the question, what do I do that's absolutely amazing? What do I do that's effortless to me? And what makes me feel confident? Figure that out. Whatever that may be, hold on to that and focus in on that and anchor into it. So when you do go into this new skill, realize it's a process, just like the other skills you've learned on your journey. The more you practice something, the better you get at it. Now do your part. Stay in faith. Don't go around complaining about what didn't work out, what you didn't get. God will make up for what was unfair. He will pay you back for the wrongs that were done. He's a God of justice. We all get the same amount in a day. Every day is 24 hours. And some people are very, very fruitful and effective. And some people just waste their time day after day after day. And that's a choice that we make. But there's one thing about time. Once it goes by, you never get it back. So how tragic it is to waste any day of your life. I think we need to live every day like it was our very last one and live it to the absolute fullest that we can live it. 
Commit yourself to learning. Feed your mind. Sharpen your interest in two major subjects, life and people. Learn more on how to get the most from life. Learn all that you can so that you can become all that you can become. Learning is the beginning of a life worth living. Learning is the beginning of happiness. Learning is the beginning of spirituality and faith. Learning and searching is where the process of creating your own personal miracle begins. Greatness does not have to have the approval of everyone. And if you are the kind of person that will have to have the approval of everyone and understanding of everyone, you'll never achieve greatness. Greatness is uncommon. Greatness is not something that you see a lot. It distinguishes you from the crowd. It makes you stick out when you become great. Disappointments will come. Betrayals, things that are not fair will come. How you deal with these offenses will determine whether you move forward or whether you get stuck bitter over what didn't work out. We find ourselves announcing our standards to our relatives, our friends, our associates. We shout our beliefs and condemn those who believe any differently, but then we don't walk the talk. Do as I say, not as I do. This is inconsistent. This leads to a loss of credibility among those who watch us. If you have a support system in place, that's beautiful. I don't understand what you're talking about. I don't really see what you see, but I'm in full support of you. Go make it happen. But in most cases, if you open up your mouth trying to explain to people what you're supposed to do, when you're supposed to do it, they will be the first people to try and talk you out. Find somebody close enough to you that has observed you or been around you that you value their opinion and ask them how do they see you and then compare what you have with what they say. See, there are things many times that people can see in us that we can't see because it's a blind spot. If you're always seeking a certain status to validate who you are, you're never gonna have peace. You can't climb up to find yourself. You have to find yourself so you can climb up. So you can be who you are before anybody knows who you are. Our dreams, the lack of sacrifice, the lack of suffering in our lives, its removal, its non-existence, also equates to a non-existence of a great life. And so embrace the fact that you're gonna to have to sacrifice and suffer to some extent. Once you've embraced that it's going to happen, it's almost not that bad. It's kind of like those of you that are fit, you've sort of accepted that before you go to the gym and get there, you're gonna to have to suffer. And we go anyway, it becomes a habit. It takes discipline to change a habit because habits are formed a little bit each day, every day. Once habits are formed, they act like a giant cable that only long-term disciplined activity can change. It takes the consistent application of a new discipline, a more desirable one to overcome one which is less desirable. We must unweave every strand of the cable of habits slowly and methodically. If it does not measure up to my expectations, I'm not going to invest my time. I don't have the luxury to waste time. I'm expecting some great things from life. So examine your expectations versus your wishes. Some people wish they could do better, but some people expect to do better. Where are you on that? I've learned life is full of wounded people, people that haven't dealt with the negative things in their past. At times, they'll be disrespectful. You can't stop the offense from coming, but you can keep it from getting down in you. How much more could you accomplish if you would start letting things go? How much better relationships would you have if you would get emotionally healthy? If you would let go of what people said? Time is an amazing power. Every day, week, month, or year is a gift given to us by God to complete a task the human mind isn't used merely because we take it for granted. Familiarity breeds contempt. 
It can do any kind of job we assign to it, but generally speaking, we use it for little jobs instead of big important ones. Decide now, what is it you want? Plant your goal in your mind. It's the most important decision you ever make in your entire life. Oh, when you give as much time and energy to your dream, to this new vision of yourself, I'll give you all your eyes can see. When you give as much time and energy to what you see, that creates the opening for miracles to show up. Do you want to be an outstanding salesman, a better worker at your particular job? Do you want to go places in your company, in your community? All you've got to do is plant that seed in your mind, care for it, work steadily toward your goal, and it will become a reality. Dream chasing isn't for the serious. It's for the sincere. And the difference between being serious and being sincere is that serious people have a can-do attitude. Sincere people have a must-do attitude. That's how dreams become reality. They become a must. My children must survive. My life must change. Now, if knowledge is power, if knowledge is the forerunner to success, then why do we fall short of our objectives? Do we find ourselves aimlessly wandering, settling for a life of existence rather than a life of substance? There may be many answers to this question. The fundamental answer is the absence of discipline. Motivate doesn't mean to yell and scream and encourage. To motivate actually means to provide a motive, a reason why. Picture yourself in your mind's eye as having already achieved this goal. See yourself doing the things you will be doing when you've reached your goal. You know, what would you want from your friendships? What would you want from your intimate relationship? How would you like to structure your family? Well, how are you going to use your time outside of your job? And how are you going to regulate your mental, physical, mental and physical health and maybe also your drug and alcohol use? Typically, discouragement strikes at the midpoint of a project Halfway up the mountain, you go, I still got to get to the top, and then I got to get all the way back. We get discouraged when something takes longer than I expected. Once you start becoming aware of the power of thought, just look around you at everything that you see. It all began with a thought. We become what we think about. And that is probably one of the most important principles in learning to manifest. What we have to look at is basically the obstacles that we have conditioned ourselves. And you notice I say that we have conditioned ourselves because I have never believed that we need to be putting the responsibility on someone else. If you're conditioned, it's because you have allowed yourself to become that. You know, if you start with the presumption that there's a baseline of suffering in life and that that can be exaggerated by, as a consequence of human failing, as a consequence of malevolence and betrayal and self-betrayal and deceit and all those things that we do to each other and ourselves that we know that aren't good, that amplifies the suffering. But you need something to put up against that. And what you put up against that is meaning. Meaning is actually the instinct that helps you guide yourself through that catastrophe. And most of that meaning is to be found in the adoption of responsibility. Anticipation is the ultimate advantage. Winners, leaders anticipate, losers react. The reason you get beat is you don't know where things are happening, so you're reacting. Reaction is always stressful. And yet so much of our life is predictable if we just were to study it, not be caught up in our day to day. It's predictable the challenges you're going to have in your relationships or with your kids or with your body. These are predictable. And if you were to anticipate these things and put a strategy in place, you could take it all out and have the quality of life that you deserve. Those that anticipate, those that lead, and then there's those that follow. The followers are the reactionaries. Things that look like they're going to overwhelm you. Remember this phrase, you are stronger than you think. God knew it was coming. He's already put things on the inside that you can't see right now, but at the appointed time, you're going to push back the dirt. You're going to come out of what's holding you back. Not like you were, but you're going to bloom. Don't be fooled by the dirt. The dirt is getting you ready to flourish.
The system we live in and contribute to is designed to make the easiest things in life the most unprofitable. Our world is and always will be a constant battle between the life of ease and its momentary rewards and a life of discipline. Each has its own price, the price of discipline or the price of regret. We will pay one or the other. You might say there is some good in the worst of us and some bad in the best of us. I want you to become involved in an active process to get some clutter out of your life. Start working on it. I'm going home tonight to clean my closets. Let's go home. Let that be our task this week.